uh, verse 1. It says, Afterwards, the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision and said, Abram, don't yield to fear, for I am your faithful shield and your abundant reward. But Abram replied, Lord Yahweh, what good is your reward if I remain childless? I'm about to die without a son, and my servant Eleazar of Damascus will inherit all my wealth. A servant in my household will end up with everything, because you have not given me any children. Immediately the word of Yahweh came to him, no, no, Eleazar will not be your heir. I will give you a son from your own body and to be your heir. Then Yahweh brought him outside his tent and said, Gaze into the night sky. Go ahead and try to count the stars. He continued, Your seed will be numerous as the stars. And Abram trusted every word Yahweh had spoken. And because of his faith, Yahweh credited it to him as righteousness. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that we can come here as a family, Lord, and focus on you and dwell on you, Lord. Lord, I um, pray that this morning you take 100% of us and working in 100% of you, and then you increase us, Lord. I, I um, pray that I'm able to, uh, to speak and to walk in the anointing that you have for me, Lord, and I pray that, um, that you open our minds and our hearts to receive, because only you can do that, Lord. If you don't draw us in, well, all this is for nothing. You are the one that draws us in. It's all about you, and I thank you, and I praise you in Jesus' name. I also pray that Tom Brady and the Buccaneers beat the Bills today. Amen. All right, all right, so the, the title of my message is Pull Me Outside, Pull Me Outside. Is, is I, now, you ever like sit back and you reminisce about the good old days, you know, I don't care like how old you are, even my daughter, she's eight years old, Kinsley, and she still will make comments about, you remember when we used to do this, remember when we, you lived in our old house? And she'll throw out stories about, about that. Sometimes I think she just makes them up because I don't remember. But I'm just going to give a little disclaimer out there. I love Fort Pierce. I love this city. Actually, um, Julie and I, we, we give each other Christmas ornaments. Y'all can clap. One person loves Fort Pierce with me. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Um, we give each other Christmas ornaments every year. That means something that's going on in the year. And I've talked about Fort Pierce, how much I love Fort Pierce so much. She got a, an ornament that has the map of, of St. Lucie County, and Fort Pierce is centered in it, and it's really cool. And then there's a little place that we're going to go down to the jet, and you put a little sand in from that town, and it's, it's pretty cool. I got her, just to, just to throw out there, I got her a Christmas ornament of a hot dog. It's true. Very true. That is true. It's a hot dog, yeah. Yeah, so... Something that's got, happened within the years, you guys, you know, I'll leave it to your imagination. But as I drive around Fort Pierce, I think about, how many of you guys grew up in Fort Pierce or been in Fort Pierce for a long time? Anybody else? All right. So when I drive around and stuff, there are, like, I remember things of how it used to be. And, and um, there's a couple of things. How many remember Blockbuster, right? Like, Blockbuster was the place. Friday night, Saturday night, you go to Blockbuster. I mean, there is something about it that you walk in and you, you, the new video, movie comes out. You go, they got the little cardboard cutouts of the, the movie because the movie's not, you, it might be behind it, but they got the, like, it has the display, it looks like the cover. But you go to pull that back to get the video, and then what you do is you see a sign that says, sorry, I'll rent it out. And then you rent Die Hard for the 10th time. But I remember over on US-1 and Virginia is still there. The building's still there. still has that sign, that Blockbuster sign like that. They've kind of changed it to different things. But how many remember Blockbuster? Now, I will say this. I love some Blockbuster, but I love even more that I can just go onto my TV and search for a movie and then stream it and watch it right there, and I don't have to go to Blockbuster. I will say that. i got to admit. How many remember Radio Shack? Radio Shack, yeah. Like, that was the jam, right? Like, all these electronics, like, whoa, is, you know, your Commodores, your Tandy 1000s there, you know, all that good stuff, Radio Shack. Um, how about service merchandise? Now, I don't, listen, growing up, my parents didn't have a whole lot of money. They were struggling, but they must have, must have, must have had a service merchandise credit card. 
because every Christmas we would go to service merchandise and we would pick stuff out. And service merchandise, if you have ever been to one, they they have like one item of everything and it's behind a like a case, a glass case, and you gotta like fill out a ticket and then you go hand it to the desk and then they bring it out. So it's like, I don't know if I want that toy or not. I can't get it and play with it. It's like behind glass, you know? So it's just like, it's, it's just, you know, it's risky with that. But that's where we got most of our Christmas, Christmas presents from service merchandise. Now, Kmart has, has, it's not been that long ago with Kmart, but I'm not just talking about Kmart. How many ever ate at the Kmart Cafe? The Kmart Cafe. Yes. Yeah, you don't know what food poisoning is <laughs> until you eat at the Kmart Cafe. Right over here on US 1 in Virginia, my grandparents would go there all the time. We'd go there to Kmart Cafe. Walk into Kmart, you go to the right, there's the little cafe right there, Kmart Cafe. Um, now, listen, I'm going to say this, and, and, and it's, I think it's a stronghold within, within me, and God's dealing with me, and I'm not a... And, and, and I need to get over it, because every time I drive down US-1 in Virginia, there's, um, there's Wendy's there. And I'm not, I, 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 I try, you know, God's just going to have to help me and, you know, with Wendy's. Because, see, when they put a Wendy's there, they tore down another building. How many remember a restaurant that used to be there where Wendy's is? I hear, Po Folks. Now, Po Folks, that was, but they had the best chicken and dumplings. Every Sunday afternoon after church, we would go to Po Folks. I miss me some Po Folks. Now, this next one, this is a, this is um. The next one is Dairy Queen. I know there's some Dairy Queens, but this isn't just any Dairy Queen. This is the Fort Pierce Dairy Queen. So over there on Orange Avenue, the building's still there. Every time we go down Orange Avenue, I tell Julie, I go, "That was Dairy Queen." Every afternoon after church, we'd go to Po Folks. Then every night, we had service that night, and then every night, we'd go with other families in the church, and we'd go to that Dairy Queen right there. Now, I know what you're thinking. I did not get a Dilly Bar. Those are OTD, which is of the devil. Not the Dilly Bar, because they mess up ice cream. Ice cream is perfect like it is. They don't need any chocolate coating over ice cream. That messes it up. You don't get the Dilly Bar. You just get the regular ice cream. It's so good at Dairy Queen. How about this next one? Woolworths. That's the Fort Pierce Woolworths. Downtown. It's the first time where I've I seen um, a blue He-Man. Woolworths. How about this one? If you're Fort Pierce, if you're Fort Pierce folk. How about this? The Orange Blossom Mall. Orange Blossom, the building's still there. They don't, they don't have that sign anymore. Now, I tried very hard to find a picture of actually inside the Orange Blossom Mall. Like when the stores were there, I couldn't find it. But I do have a picture of the Orange Blossom Mall, the oldest one I could find. Is it up there? Do we have it? Right there? Now, I'm going to tell you a story, guys. Just can't leave anywhere. You're just right here, okay? This Orange I got in so much trouble at this Orange Blossom Mall. This is where we get Diamond Gems, KB Toys, uh, Dugout Sports Shop. Um, so, one time... You know, I had some, it definitely, you know, out of character, but I had some bad influences in my life. They talked me into skipping school one time, and um, we went to the Orange Blossom Mall. And they also, being a bad influence, they convinced me to smoke a cigarette. Now, I still, to this day, don't know why I decided, well, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I'm going to smoke it going down Orange Blossom Mall. <laughs> we walked in the Orange Blossom Mall. It's peer pressure, peer pressure. That's what it is. I started walking down Orange Blossom Mall. I walked in. I lit that cigarette up, and I was walking right around by all these fountains right there. See that little area right there? That's where I sat with Santa Claus, that little blue area. And the Easter Bunny would be there sometimes, too. And, um, I, but I was, and the security guard goes, hey, you, smoking a cigarette. You can't smoke in here. And, dude, I took off running because if I knew if they caught me, they were going to ask me the number of my parents. And if my parents would have known, my mom would have kicked my butt. Like, I would not be here right now, probably, if my mom would have caught it. We got back in the car, and I told my friend Chris Fields, I said, take me to school. <laughs> it was also at the same Orange Blossom Mall that I decided one time, because of other bad influences, of course, not, not, the, you know, not me, I was innocent. But uh, we decided that we were going to skip church on a Wednesday night, not go to youth, we'll go to the Orange Blossom Mall. My parents were at church. Now, that were the church that I grew up in, the, the sanctuary was was in one part, and then the um, youth room was over in another part of the building. My mom was sitting there in the sanctuary, and she thought, 
I just, Jimmy, I don't feel like Jimmy's here. She got up. She went into the youth room. She saw that I wasn't there. Let me tell you, she went exact, she knew exactly where I was. I was walking. I was being cool. I was walking through the Orange Blossom Mall. Like, um, I, all my friends, the people that were with me, they were extremely impressed by my coolness. And then all of a sudden, I heard a voice that I was very familiar with. And she said, Jimmy. And I was like, all right, guys, I got to go. How about this? Uh, mixed tapes. You guys remember mixed tapes? Yeah. Mixed tapes. Tom, I bet back in the day you gave Carrie some mixed tapes, didn't you? Yeah. Now, my mixed tapes, personally, like every mixed tape that I had was missing like the first 10 seconds of it. Because what you, you had a tape recorder, and for that tape recorder, you would listen to the radio, and when the song would come on, you'd be like, oh, that's it. No, no, oh, no, that's not it. Oh, yes, it is it. And then you would take, have to take two fingers and push play and record at the same time, and you would record it. And every single song of my mixed tapes was missing the first 10 seconds. <laughs> but I miss those days, right? Like, I go around, I think about these things, and I, I get sad about it. Anybody else ever get sad about change? Yeah. yeah, you get sad. I mean, stuff's pretty good right now. You know, I'm glad I don't have to go to a blockbuster to get a video. But I still, it's something about it, and I, I miss that. And then we, get, we start to get sad, and we start to get upset because, like, we know we realize change is going to happen. But we kind of picture in our mind how change is going to happen, and when it doesn't happen the way that we think it's going to happen... Well, we get upset, and we start looking at things on, in our perspective. I used to think every family was like the Lloyd's family. Then I started staying the night with my friends, and I was like, whoa, we ain't messed up at all. I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. I think I'll stay in this family. But we see things from our perspective of how we grew up. We see things from our, our earth perspective, and I just want to tell you that life is not meant to live from earth to heaven, which is what we do a lot of times, earth's perspective to heaven, but it's supposed to be from heaven's perspective to earth. But a lot of times we look around and we just kind of judge everything, look at everything in, in our perspective. And I look around and I think some of you guys, maybe you're not getting it, so I'll tell you another story real quick. I was 13 years old and I was um, in the eighth grade and we were going on a field trip. I was very excited about this field trip. Um, we, um, there was this one girl, she went there, her name was Melanie, and I, would, I, I really wanted to hang out with Melanie, she had no idea who I was. And um, we went to Bush Gardens, and I was like, all right, I'm excited. Now, here's the thing, the problem is, the week before, my mom, she switched, we used to always use whisk detergent. Anybody remember whisk? I do not think they make it anymore. She switched from whisk to Tide, Tide must have been on sale, it must have been, you know, had a discount on that. We, we switched. Now, what happened with that Tide detergent, when I, after she washed my clothes in it, I got a rash. Okay, I would got I got a rash under my arms, on my chest, in places that you cannot talk about in church. At least it's not appropriate to. And you would itch those so much, and then you would itch it so much that then it would stop itching, and then you would become chafed. And I just want to say we got a lot of chafed Christians walking around. Because see, this is what happened at Bush Gardens. Everybody was so excited. We got there. And I, it hurt just to walk. Like, it hurt to walk around. And I remember, my friends were like, hey, let's go to this roller coaster all the way on the other side of the park. And I'm like, ah, good. I just, I like the petting zoo. I'll just stay right here. You guys go. And I, I spent that, almost that whole trip, like, by myself, like, just staying around, like, uh, around the fountain or something, you know. We got back in the bus to go home. Everybody's like, whoa, we love Bush Gardens. What do you think of the trip? They all loved it. I hated it. Because I saw it from my perspective. And it was very painful. And it hurt. And I didn't like it at all. Just a side note. Just to kind of um, throw there. You can chalk it up to bad parenting. That We did not throw that Tide detergent away. We used it. Like, my, like no, we bought it. We're going to use it till it's out. Sorry about your luck, Jimmy. But we see things from our perspective. And we start to, when it, things don't turn out how we think it should we get upset well i just want to say this we're in good company because there's this dude named abram we just read about him he that happened to him now if you're like I, who's this dude named abram well he's a very famous guy in the bible you may have heard of him but maybe not know him by abram but he god changed his name in um, genesis chapter 17 but he's you may know him more by abraham we used to sing about a song father abraham i had many sons 
many sons that father Abraham. Am I one of them? And so are you. Let's just praise the Lord. And then you go right on. And listen, we love that song in kids' church because that's the closest we could get to dancing in the church because dancing was outlawed. It was like foot loose back in the 80s, guys. All right. So God comes, he changes his name and 17, but, you know, and he changes it to Abraham, like Abram to Abraham. I'd be like, God, if you're going to change my name, can't you give me something a little cooler? Like, I would have been like, maybe like, like, like Cage or, or, or maybe like, like Steel or Maverick, Gotham. Like, that would be like the names I would have wanted. But, no, he just said, oh, you know, not Abram anymore, you're Abraham. All right, cool. Now, for us to, um, this, at the beginning of this in verse in 15:1 it starts off as saying after these things or afterwards so what is this after what what is what what happened before all this what is this after why is abram all upset after these things after these things i'll tell you what it's after if you go to genesis chapter 12 verse 1 through 4 we can read about the beginning of abram's relationship with god this is the very beginning this is this is the middle of it. abram at this time is 75 years old He's 75 years old, around the same as Pastor Mark. And said, now Yahweh said to Abram, leave it all behind. All of it? Yes, all of it. Leave it all behind. Your native land, your people, your father's household, everything you know, leave it all behind. And go to the land that I will show you. Follow me, and I will make you into a great nation. I will exceedingly bless and, and prosper you, and I will make you famous so that you will be a tremendous source of blessing to others. I will bless all who bless you and curse all who curse you, and, though you will, and through all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram obeyed Yahweh and left, left, and Lot went with him. Lot is his nephew. So God is blessing Abram. He is just, he, he said, this is going to, out of you, there's going to be great nations. You know, he's, he's all excited. He's all pumped about it. He promises there's going to be nations through him and his wife, Sari. And at this time, he's 75 years old. Here's the thing. Sari, his wife, she's barren. It's already been decided. Everybody knows she can't have kids. And now God's saying, Abraham, through you, Abram, there's going to be many nations. And, and there's one part where he compares his descendants as dust. And there's a lot of dust, if you guys haven't noticed. Chapter 13, we find where, well, Abram, he, he had problems, okay? But I'm just going to say this. If you could pick problems, like this would be a problem I, I, I would want to have. In chapter 13, it says that he had so much wealth, so much cattle, he had all these people working for him, and he was, he was traveling with his nephew Lot, and Lot had so much wealth and so much cattle and so many people, and he said, we got too much here. Like, that's a good problem. I, I can see it being a problem, but, like, that's a problem I'd like to have, you know. Be like, hey, Pastor Mark, we're just bringing in too much, too much in the, in the offering, too much. Everybody's giving. It's like too much. We got to break and, and have two churches. There's just so much. Like, I, that's, a, that's a problem. Like, that would be nice to have, you know? But it was a problem. So Abram went to Lot, and he said, hey, we got to split this thing up. You go your way. I'll go my way. You pick which way you want to go. I'll pick which way I want to go. Let, let, let's divide this thing, and that's what they did. So he had so much wealth, they had to divide it between them. Now, a few years passed. Actually, let's read, and I got one more. One more. Um, what was it? Genesis. I added this kind of at the last minute. Got it. Um, Genesis 13, 13, verse 14. Yep. This is, after Lot separated from him, Yahweh spoke to Abram, lift up your eyes and look around you to the north, the south, the east, the west, as far as you can see in every direction is the land that I will give you forever to you and your seed. So he said, I'm going to multiply it. Now, Abram, undoubtedly, he's pumped. He's excited about this. But now in chapter 15, 10 years have passed. It's been a decade. There's no baby. Starts, that doubt starts to come in. And we find, we, we find later on, just a little bit about the Abram story, 
is later his wife, Sari, she starts thinking, well, maybe we're supposed to um, make this thing happen. You ever done that? Like, well, you know, God, you know, he's, he'll, he'll do for me what I can't do, but he won't do for me what I, what I can do, so maybe i got to make stuff happen. So what his wife, Sari, she thought she had this great idea. She went to her husband, Abram, and he says, hey, obviously I'm not going to have no kids. Like, it's, been a, it's, it's been a while, man. You're getting old. I'm getting old. So why don't we try this? I got this chick that's working for me. Her name is Hagar. So why don't you just sleep with her, and y'all have a baby. We'll raise it like ours. But, Sari, let me get this correct, because I'm not sure if I heard you right. It's been a long day. You, you want me to um, have sex with that girl that works for you and have a baby. Yeah, that's what I want. I want you to be happy, you know. I mean, <laughs> like, if we were watching this, like, it was a soap opera, like, playing out, because it kind of seems like it. Like, we were watching this, like, two things. Like, all the women would be like, uh-uh, don't do it, sorry. No, you're going to regret All the guys would be like, way to go, Abram. All the guys at a different church. If I was doing this message at a different church, not the guys at Farallon, we wouldn't be doing that. That was a close one, guys. I got us out of that. But all of us would be like, this is not going to turn out good. Guess what? It didn't. Abram slept with Hagar. They had a baby. His name was Ishmael. But before they had the baby, Hagar was pregnant. Guess what? Sari gets a little upset about it. Like, she starts, like, acting like really angry towards Hagar. I didn't see that coming. Hagar gets upset. She's like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. She starts walking. She gets to this well. The angel of the Lord appears by the well and says, hey, hey, hey where are you going? She's like, oh, you know, woman I work for, you know, she's, <laughs> she's acting all, she's acting funny, you know, and she's just, um, yeah. And I was just getting out of here. He says, no, you're not. You're pregnant with child. You're going to name him Ishmael. He goes, he's going to be a wild man. I don't know that's something that you want to hear about your son. I got your kid. Like, you know, Ooh, God told me my kid's going to be a wild man. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he might want to get some riddling. And then um, <laughs> says, and the angel was like, go back to, to Sari. Apologize. Apologize for what? Just, just do it, okay? Go back and, and, and submit to her work on her. So she went back. She had Ishmael. Now, Ishmael, if you, re, if you read on about his story, he lives to be 136 years old. And, um, but he has a lot of conflict. Uh, there's one part of it. He was referred to as a wild man. And then there was a part where Abram was praying to God and talking to God about Ishmael. And he goes, don't worry about Ishmael. He's going to be like a wild donkey. What? Like, you come up and tell me, hey, Jimmy, your son acts like a wild donkey. Yeah, I don't. Probably not a good idea. But at 13 years old, I, um, they end up, Abraham and Sari, or Abraham and Sarah at the time, then they, they have Isaac. And then Sari's like, you got to get Hagar and Ishmael out of here. And they, they go on their way, and there's a pretty cool story to that. One day I'm going to probably have a message on that, but I just want to say this. A lot of times when we try to make things happen and we strive and we try to say, I mean, i got to help God out. i gotta, I, I got to do this, and, and we don't wait on God. What happens is we birth Ishmael's instead of waiting for the Isaacs. Yeah. And we all do it all the time, right? i got to make this happen. Man, God's not working fast enough. It's not turning out how I thought it should turn out, so i got to make this happen. So now here in Genesis chapter 15, though, before all that part, Abram is discouraged. He's upset. The Bible says he's sitting in his tent. He's like, I thought it would happen by now, God. I thought, I thought I'd have a child by now. He's thinking about his legacy. And he's like, man, if I don't have a child, like all my stuff, everything I've done is going to go to this dude named 
Eleazar. Eleazar was his, worked for him. He was he was a um, he was a steward of the house. He took care of his house. But if he if Abraham Abraham didn't have a son, Eleazar, who's not even related to him, would inherit all his stuff. And he's like, man, Eleazar's going to get all this stuff. I mean, he has a really cool name, but he shouldn't get all my stuff. Like it should go to my son. And it's all weighing on him. And then the Lord visits him in a vision, and he goes. Yo, Abraham, Abram, hey, I'm your faithful shield. I'm your abundant reward. In other words, he said, I'm your Christmas gift. I'm your gift. He didn't say, your gift is all your wealth or your gift is all your blessings. He said, I am your reward. I am your gift. Now, listen, it's almost Christmas. And I'm going to just fill you guys in. She, Julie's right here. She's sitting right here, but, you know, um, uh, normal, you get someone a Christmas gift. I'm not just going to give her the Christmas ornament hot dog, you know. I mean, that's enough. I get that. But but see, here's the thing, baby. I, I've looked. I've, here's the thing. Sorry to do this right here in the middle of service, but um, I have, all through the city, I've looked high and low. And out of all the department stores, I have not found one gift that matches the magnificent of your beauty. So, for this Christmas, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap myself up. I'm going to put a bow on myself, and I'm going to put myself under the tree. And, baby, you can unwrap me early. You know what I'm saying? After church, if you want to, once we're home. Now... Most likely, her response would be, if she wasn't embarrassed, would be, you know, Amazon delivers overnight. Like, we got Amazon Prime. Well, Abram answered a lot like that. Abram's upset. He's discouraged. He's getting depressed. He's isolated. He has isolated himself. He's in a tent. Guys, we, we do that all the time. Things don't turn out how we want. It was like, man, I don't like dealing with people. People don't do what I'm supposed like what I want them to do. So in, in Proverbs, I read it just earlier this week. In Proverbs, King Solomon, he compares isolation. He calls ice, isolation selfishness. I never saw it like this. Because you're so, so like, I don't want to be around people because people are unpredictable. And I know when I'm home, when I'm by myself and I'm in my tent, I control everything around in my tent. So here's Abram. He's in his tent. He's just hanging out. He's upset. He's depressed. He's like, look, God. It's the funny part. He tells God to look while he's sitting in his tent by himself. Look, God, at all this around me. <laughs> like God, not the ultimate looker. Yeah. Like we need to show God. We need to tell God. I'll admit this. This happened earlier this, this week. We have a person, a member of this church, a member of this family. Right now, she is in, in the hospital at St. Lucie Medical Center, and she goes through seizures. And she has, and, and she is dedicated to God. She has, she has come so far, and her, she, her testimony has blessed so many people. Yet, on Wednesday night, we were here, and she was having seizures here, and she had seizures all night. And she went to St. Lucie Medical Center, and now she is, she's sedated and stuff. And I'm like, look, God, what? look at her. Why? But all kinds of things don't turn out how we think they would turn out. And we feel like we got to show God, like, what's going on. Like, I don't know what they were thinking. Do you think God was going to be like, well, shoot, Abram, I didn't know it was that bad. Whew. Man. I'm sorry. Dude, I didn't know everything was going like that. Just scrap all those promises I gave you. 
And just hold on, brother, just hold on. Like God doesn't know what's going on. Like we got to tell God to look. Now, reading this, I would think at this point, at this time, what God would do, because he's blessed, he has blessed Abram so much. Like, Abram just left his hometown, just left it with nothing, and God just continued to bless him over and over again. And now, though, he's upset. Now he's in this tent. There's no baby crying. There's no kids laughing in this tent. There's no promises being met. In his mind, in this tent. Look, God. Seeing it from his perspective. Now, I would expect God right now at this time to come down and give, like, Abram the ultimate cosmic slap down. Like, what are you talking about telling me to look? You think I ain't looking? You think I need you to look for me? You think? God didn't do that. He didn't do that at all. What do you do? Pastor Chantel, you can come up here. Try to add some really spiritual music to this ending of the message. This is the part where it's going to get good, guys. (laughs) He don't do that. He don't come and give them cosmic smackdown. What he does is God comes down from his world into Abram's world in Genesis 15 it says that he took him outside of his tent he pulled him outside guys I believe that's what God's wanting to do with Farallon Church that's what God's wanting to do with us and our families he is wanting to pull us outside outside of our norm outside of our limitations outside of our perspective he's wanting to pull us outside and he takes Abram and he says I'm going to show you something man He pulls him outside. He says, see all those stars? All those stars. Your descendants are going to outnumber all of those. Abram's sitting in his tent before this happens, saying, what good is you being my gift? What good is your reward? I have no son. I have no child to give it to. Abram is holding on to one son, one child. And what God's wanting to give him is so many descendants that it outnumbers the stars. It outnumbers the dust in the land. Whatever you're holding on to, God's wanting to outdo that. But as long as we're trying to make it happen, as long as we're trying to climb sycamore trees, as long as we're giving birth to Ishmael's and not waiting for Isaac's, We got to give it to him, guys. He wants to get us outside of our perspective. I'm not saying your perspective is wrong. I'm not saying your way of thinking is wrong. What I'm saying is his way is greater than our way. And he's wanting to do something in your life that's going to blow your mind. And he's wanting to, us to get outside of our tent. I believe one of my assignments this year and going into 2022 is for me to get outside of my tent, for me to get my family outside of their tent, and to get this church outside of our tent, and then to get this community outside of their tent. But it's all going to start with me. What have you been holding on to? Some of you, you're so mad. Somebody, somebody here is, you are mad at church. You are mad at a certain preacher or pastor because you've been prophesied over. You've been given promises. And it hasn't happened yet. And it's been a long time. And you're like, he just made that up. And you've been holding on to it. Let it go. You know, Abraham, he was like, what, 99 years old? He had Isaac. 
He was promised at 75. He said, I'm, your descendants are going to cover this land. 75. Which, by the way, is pretty old. Like, I come to me at 75. I ain't going to have no babies. Like, I'm 43. I ain't having no babies no more. <laughs> What? We got all you guys. And I got Pastor Mark. What is it that you need to get outside? Guys, this isn't me getting on to you because there's a lot of things. There's a lot of tents I need to get outside of. There's a lot of times I get frustrated because things don't turn out the way that I thought they should turn out. But what's so cool is when I just give it over to God, I can't take any credit for it. Because I, this is all you, God. It's all you. What is it that you need to get outside of? Pastor Mark? Yeah. Come up here and land this plane. Finish in four minutes early, just so if you got anybody's taking notes.